Justine Malone with TMC Media, sitting today here with John Black in Melbourne, just before his Melbourne show. We're going to talk a little bit about how he came to fruition as an artist. And thank you so much again for your time, especially before your big show. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel good. What's up, people? How you doing? It's your boy, Jim Black, the African boy, the boy from Africa, Uganda. See you guys. I love you. Well, thank you again for your time today. So you are from Uganda. Uganda. (laughs) You know Uganda? Yeah, I do. I'm from South Africa, so it's kind of... South Africa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been there twice and I love it. And I'm planning to go back to South Africa. I want to do some projects there. Yeah, what kind of projects? I want to shoot some videos. I'm working on an album. Mm -hmm. So I need to shoot some videos in South Africa. It looks good, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and it has got some good directors, video directors. It's beautiful. Yeah. So growing up in Uganda, tell me a little bit about your childhood and how you came into music. Yeah, I grew up in a family of so many kids. How many? My dad gave birth to so many, so many, so many kids. We were more than 15. So life was hard. And my mom and dad, mom, they are farmers. Mm -hmm. So life was very hard. What did they farm? Mm, in, in Uganda, we farm a lot of things, but mm, you know cassava? cassava? Yeah, cassava, sweet potatoes, bananas. Then we would sell them to the markets. Yeah, yeah we were vendors. M- Mom would give us the things to take them to the market, and then we get the money back, and then we, we should buy some home things, you know, like soap, paraffin. We didn't have electricity, so you buy paraffin and you put it in there. In the, uh, I don't know how to call it, but that's that was life. Yeah. It was very, very, very bad. Very hard. Yeah, and I even did get done with my studies cause of school fees. When I left my mom, cause she couldn't take care of us. We are so many, and even that dad had other families to take care of. Yeah. So I, they took me to my auntie's place in Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. I started studying from there, from P5 to S4, mm-hmm. and that's where I dropped out. Mm-hmm. And I, but nobody knew that I could sing because I was shy. And you know, in Africa, talent believe in studies, yeah. in education. The moment she has that you're doing football, you, you're doing music, they be like, now this kid is proud. This kid is going to start taking drugs. That's what they get scared of. Yeah. So I couldn't tell anyone about my talent, apart from me and my heart. So when did you know that you could sing? Since I was a kid, because I used to imitate those, those stars of Uganda. I used to sing, I really used, I really enjoyed singing. And when I was like in P6, that's when I, when I came to Kampala, that's when I discovered hip hop and hip hop was doing well those days, hip hop and R&B. So I really used to listen to American music, Lil Wayne, Drake, I, I, I would imitate them. So I was like, when I grow up, I want to be like these guys. And I used to rap. Of course, f- lyrics weren't clear, but I at least I had the flow. Yeah. And my friends were like, you can do it. Some. But of course, you know, when you with the guys, they just doubt you. They don't believe in you. They think that someone to be big, you have to be Illuminati. You know those things. You, have, you must have money. So, of course, they didn't believe in me. But I believed in myself. And God believed in me. <laughs> So when you dropped out of school, you were singing. What did you do around then? When I dropped out of school, first of all, I taken along without going back to my mom's place. You didn't go back? My auntie was a bit strict. So I don't know, but I took long without, go- without seeing my mom, without seeing my, s- my brothers and sisters. So I really missed them. So when I, I just decided, I told my auntie, actually she was from South Africa yeah. for a holiday. And I told her, I want to go and see my mom. I want to go and spend some time with her. So when I reached in the village, life wasn't as I expected it to be. It was really, really, really bad because I'd gone to rest. But when I reached there, I couldn't rest according to the situation I found them in. So the next day, I was on the, I was on the bus back to Kampala. What was so bad about going home? What did you notice? I just had I'd gone to relax because I'd got done with the studies. Yeah. I was in my vacation. So I was like, let me go back to my mom's place. I, I take some rest. Of course, I have some early days there with my family because I've taken long without seeing my parents and my brother. So I, I really miss them. But when I reached there, the situation they were in wasn't really bad. It wasn't, was, was so, 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 so terrible. What was it 
the house was about to fall, the house was small, there were so many. All my brothers had dropped out of school because they didn't have school fees. And I really, I, I felt touched. I was like, I need to help my family. But the only way I could do it, I had to go back to Kampala and I look for some industries. Okay, my aunt was just educating me, but she couldn't take care of the whole family because she also had other responsibilities. So it was, it was about me to help my mom and my brothers and sisters. So when I reached in, when I reached home, I just, I told my mom, I'm going back the next day to Kampala. She was like, why are you going back? I was like, don't worry. I need to find something at least to help my brothers. I really want my brothers to study. Mm -hmm. So when I get back to Kampala, I started working in companies. There is a Zam, a Zam company. It makes, it makes, it makes wheat flour. You know wheat flour? Yeah. yeah, flour. It makes flour. And then after Azam, I went to another company. It's called, it's called, I've uh, forgotten the name. Sorry, sorry, I've got it. But it makes lubricant oil for motor vehicles. Then the second thing, I used to get that money and then uh, uh, I would send them some money. And then I had the talent in me and I really want, I really needed to help myself because no one else was going to help me. And at that stage, were you still keeping your singing a secret? No, since, since I was independent, I had no one to fear. I was I was taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. That's when I just, I started showing people that I'm an artist. And some people thought that I'm gonna get spoiled. First of all, I, I dropped out of school. Second, I'd left my auntie's place who was taking care of me. And now they hear that I'm singing. That's when people started th telling my mom, that boy is gonna get spoiled. You should get him out of town. Mm -hmm. Take him back to the village. Mm -hmm. But I told mama I need to hustle. And, and I feel like I can become one of the biggest artists in our country. So I saved some money for studio, and then I saved some money for family, and then I saved some money for, for um, of course, for myself as a person. But it was like, if I would, if uh, let me see, it was like something like something like thirty dollars a week. Yeah, for so, the studio. No, not for the right. studio. All salary because they would pay us a week. Yeah. So you saved that money for the family, for the studio, and then for yourself. And then I got some guys. We had grew we grew up together. They were my friends. So when they heard that I'd left my 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 auntie's place, they decided to help me somehow. But of course, as a man, you can't be you can't be you can't depend on someone for everything you need. You have to fight for yourself as a man also. So I I would also collect some money for myself, and then I get help from those friends of mine who I treated well when I was in good life because at my auntie's place, life was okay, yeah. but it wasn't my place. So I had to find my place and I start my life. So that's how, that's how I started my journey in music industry. So were you writing your own songs and yes. just practicing on your own? Yes. As I told you that I, I, I had it in me mm. and I, second, I didn't have money for writers. I couldn't pay writers. So it, it taught me to, to, to do it on my own because no, the writers were charging a lot of money. Second, I knew no one in the industry. I was new in the industry. Yeah. So I just had to, ha to help myself. The only man I could, I could afford was for production, not for writing. So I, 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 I used to do that myself till now. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't know anyone in the industry. How did you tap into it? I think I've, first of all, I looked for the best producers. I looked for the best producers. I always wanted to work with the best. There were so many studios around, but those studios didn't have what I wanted. Cause I had something big in me and I believe that if I, if I get some, if I get good production, I'll get that thing. But if you invest in little money, still you get little. So at least I sacrificed. I saved my Kamani and I went to the best studio. That's where my life started in the industry. But second, it was God because I didn't suffer a lot in the industry. I did not suffer. It took me something like one year because I made something like two, two songs and then the third one was a hit. And so. do you think it was also just your talent and your drive? Yes. First of all, I came with a I came with a unique voice in the industry. Mm. To me, I didn't know that it was unique, but to, to the people who heard it, they really say this voice is very unique in the industry and it's gonna help you to penetrate. Though, the first producer I worked with did believe in my voice, 
didn't believe in you. We had to fight. He told me you'll never make it in life. You can't sing like this. You sing like a frog. <clears throat> so the guy was like, you'll never make it. You'll never make it. How did they make you feel? Of course, it made me feel bad, but still, it kept me going. Because yeah. I had some people to prove. Yeah. You know, when people criticize you, it helps you because you, you have some people to prove. But when you're just in a comfort zone, you, you do things on your, like, yeah. on your pace. But when that guy told me that you'll never make it, your voice can't sink, your vocals are fake, I just had to prove to him. I prayed to God. I told God it's you who gave me this talent. And I believe that you really blessed my talent. I just need you to keep me focused and keep me going. The next producer I went to was so, so, so amazed by my voice. He was like, I've never heard of this voice before. You really sing well. Your voice is unique. Your voice can take you places. So that's, that's when I started. And even the industry, they started imitating me. Some of them found it funny, but they loved it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how I've, I, I, broke, I broke through. And how many years did it take from signing with your producer to becoming known in your industry? Um, it only took me two years, mm-hmm. only two years. So many artists are there. They have been, they have been underground for years and years. Yeah. But me, it only took me two years. i tell you what, I didn't know anyone in the industry. I didn't know any promoter. It was just my work. Yeah. And a few people I had who were committed to help me and God. And what was the growth scale like through those few years, uh, looking at the stats online on your um, Spotify, on your social channels? What trend did you see? Yeah, 2019 was my breakthrough year. And I was one of the top five streamed artists in Uganda online and even underground the most loved artists like the most trending artist that year was very nice i even put up a concert i had few songs yeah but i put up my personal collider like a, a real big concert yeah in uganda putting up a concert it needs when you have a lot of songs something like 20 songs and above but me i had i had five songs but i put up a concert and people came like this and i traveled to different parts of the country and yeah. people still came though I was affected by COVID. Yeah, because that's yeah. when COVID came in in 2020. My breakthrough year was 2019. And then 2020, COVID came in. Then everything went down. But since I'd, um, I'd already made a name, I was already established. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't worried about it. What did you do during COVID? Did you sit down and write some more? Did you launch any songs? During COVID, to be honest, COVID was a very tough time for me. Because that's when I separated with my former management. Those guys I told you, mm-hmm. when we things were moving on well, everything was all right. But during COVID, that's when I I found a tough time. I actually I was depressed because those guys. Okay, I only wanted one thing from them. They were handling my social media platforms. Mm-hmm. So I told them I want to run my social media platforms because it's me. When you post something, people think it's me. And then, you know, sometimes you get you get some disagreements, but when we would get some disagreements with them, they would go to my social media platforms and then post bad things about me. Yeah. So people are like, Johnny, are you okay? Why are you, why are you abusing yourself? These are your social media platforms, that, but you're talking bad things about yourself. So I told these guys, man, I need to run my social media platforms for you. You can run anything, but at least give me, my, give me back my social media platforms and my YouTube. Mm-hmm. But those guys refused, so... It was really, it was a terrible moment. We separated, they took my social media platforms. I, I had to work hard to get some of them. So I, is that something in your contract that other artists should be aware of? Since we were brothers, like we were friends, we grew up together, we didn't sign any contract. Yeah. We didn't sign any contract. But by the time they realized that we should sign our contract, it was too late because the things they were telling me to, to sign against, I didn't like them. I didn't like them. That's when they took everything they had opened for me. They took they took everything, and then I remained with few things. Actually, they took my social media, my YouTube channel. Also, it had it had it had a hundred k a hundred k subscribers, and all my music was gone. So you had no access to them, and they no they just them. held them I had hostage. No to them, but at least I managed to get back my Instagram and then my Facebook, and some few other things. Yeah, so artists out there, they should be aware of that.
-hmm. at least when they're signing you make sure that you're running your, so me your, so your social media platforms yeah. or the the key uh author on them pardon or the 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 owner of them and then other people can be the collaborators in the platforms yeah yes at least at least but at least you should have access to your social media platforms you should, you should have the logins because when you whenever and it, it didn't happen to only me so many artists some of them reach to an extent of changing their names yeah because they even the labels they they, they even send the, their names so at least at least artists they should be careful about that at least before you sign anything get your personal lawyer to help you mm. not the label to get you a lawyer yeah yeah okay but at least i thank god right now i'm doing well yeah i'm doing well at least i've managed to get back where i was and at least i'm going yeah. i'm going everything is doing well now so you struggled with a bit of depression through COVID, is that correct yeah that's right because i had no money we weren't working and they, they, they had taken my, my social media platforms, my YouTube channel. Second, in Uganda, you can't rely, you, oh, you can't depend on online streams like that money. That money is very small because Uganda is a small country. Yeah. Second, the internet is very expensive, so people can't stream. The money from streams is very little. It can't, it can't take care of you. And remember, you have to still keep on releasing music. Mm -hmm. So it was really tough for me. The only way we get money in Uganda is by performing from one place to another. But yeah. be, because of COVID, we couldn't, we couldn't do it. Okay. So it was really hard for me because I, I had to keep my brand moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did you pull yourself out of that? Good friends and God. Yeah, and good. People came, people came in, people came, people were helping. And as a man, remember the life before I became a star was a hustler, and I always be a hustler. So I hustled so hard to get to get back to get yeah. back to my to my good life. Yeah, I hustled. Yeah, yeah. So coming out of COVID, and we're in 2022 now. Yeah. Um, what were the steps you took to release the new music? I had to be consistent. I had to keep on doing music. I had to keep on releasing music. And I had to keep on pushing it and promoting it. And, and in 2020, the good thing, that's when the, our president opened up the country. So we got back to our work. And that's how I've survived. I've managed to survive till now, yeah. And how would you personally describe your sound uh, if, if it wasn't you? So somebody else is still describing your sound. How do you think people perceive it? I think my sound is a very, it's a very, it's, a, it's just a vibe. Uh, it's uh, just a vibe someone can just listen to and feel the vibe and feel the life. So, because some people don't uh, don't understand what I sing, but still, they feel yeah, they feel the rhythm, they feel the beats, the way I sing, even my voice. Yeah. They, they 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 really like my voice because I remember in Fiji, so many people were doing remixes of my songs, but I, I've never been to Fiji, I've never been to Mexico, but people people love my music. So I believe my vibe is really yeah. crazy and people love it. But I think the, the, the uniqueness in my music is my voice, yeah. is my voice. And what do you envision for yourself for the future at the moment? I want to be, I want to be among the top artists to come from Africa and to the world, like how you see Banner Boy, like how you see Wizkid. That's why I'm here. Now this is an, 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 another level because every time we would step out of the country, We've always been performing for Ugandan communities in, in, in those specific countries like UK, you go to UK, you go to US, but we're only performing for Ugandan communities. Yeah. But here it's quite different because I'm performing for different people. Now this is another level because I don't want to be only a Ugandan artist. I want to be a world star. Yeah, yeah I want to be a world star. I want to be known. I want to spread the gospel everywhere, not only in Uganda. And who would you like to, if you had to do a collaboration with someone, who would you like to do that with? I would like to work with some of the biggest artists in Africa, like Banner Boy, like Whiskey, Davido. Yeah. Because Have you ever remember. reached out to them to try and connect? To be honest, they are hard to get. They are, they are very hard to get. But I try. I send them messages, but you know, they are stars. They, Sing your message, man. Those guys are followed by a million people. So you just try, you just try. You try. But you know, all I have is hope. Because even where I am right now, it was it was a dream. Yeah. 
So I have that hope that one day, one, one time, even if I don't work with them, my dream is to reach to the world, is to be known all over the world. At least I want to cross. I, I, I don't want to be in one country like this, like Uganda, because Uganda is very small. Uganda is very, is very small. And I believe with my music and my talent and my voice, it can help me to cross to different nations. So I believe if, even if I don't collaborate with anyone, I know God will help me because now you saw here. Yeah. So it's God. It's God doing all this. Yeah. yeah. What kind of new music do you have coming out that we should keep an eye out for? Yeah, right now I'm working on an album and I'm planning to release it next year. Yeah. Next year, like in March or April. And what's it called? Mm. Have you released the name of it yet? No, no, we haven't no, released the name. We're still working on it. I'm still working on it, but I'll be letting you know. Okay. And yeah. will you follow that with a tour or we, uh, a post launch? Pardon? Will you follow that with a tour to. Yes, of course. Yep. I need to do some media tours around. I need to go to different countries. As I told you, that now I need to penetrate to different countries, mm. to different nations. I can't just release an album and sit in one place. Yep. When I release it like this, I'll be doing media tours and I'll be coming back to Australia and I do another interview with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll uh, see you in about a year after the, the release? Yeah, after the release. After the release. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a couple of last questions. Um, a lot of artists like to see themselves as leaving a legacy. Mm. How do you want people to think about you once, once you know, one of the greats? I know. I just want people to think about me as a humble, a humble star. Humble star. Hey, because so many, so many famous guys, when they become famous, they become unruly. I've seen them. That's why many parents, they really don't want their kids to be artists. They don't want their kids to be like in spotlight, yeah. in spotlight. Because when they be artists, they get spoiled. They get money, but still they get spoiled. Yeah. Some of them are dying young. You, you see how people in America are dying. They're dying, they're killing themselves, they're being shot. That's not how I want my life to be. Yeah. I want to inspire those kids. And I want to let, I, 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 want, I want parents to know that being an artist doesn't mean that you, 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 you are in violence. And second, I promised God that when he blesses me and I become a star in the world, I always preach his gospel. When you're preaching God's gospel, you don't, you don't have to be arrogant. You have to be humble because even Jesus was humble. So you think by preaching gospel and saying that it, it'll keep you humble? No, like I'm not preaching gospel like I'm preaching that, believing in all that, but, but the way, the way, the, 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 way, I'm, the, the way I'm taking myself, the way I'm, the way I'm pre pre presenting myself in front of the people, also shows a sign of a good person. Because I, 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 I prayed to God and I promised him, if you help me with this and this, I'll be like this. Yeah, yeah and there are certain things I promised him not to do, like drinking alcohol, not smoking. I'm, I'm just humble like this because I want to show those parents in Africa that everything is possible. And talent, talent is wealthy. Because mm -hmm. they are forcing their kids to school. Okay, studying is not bad. But some kids are doing what they, what they don't want because they're being forced by parents. Yeah. So please, and parents out there, please help your, help your kids, support them. Music is not bad, music is good. Music is really good and being in music doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Yeah. There are so many good, good people in, in the industry. You see how Eddie Sheeran behaves. Yeah. He's an artist, he's a star, but he's a humble guy. Isn't it? It is? Yeah, yeah, that's how it should be. So that's what I'm trying to portray out there to the people. Well, thank you so much. We, you know, absolutely love your music and enjoyed listening to everything about your story. Is there something you'd like to add to the interview or say to your audience? I just want to thank you guys for hosting me. Second, I want to thank my fans all over the world who are watching this interview. And to those who have just got to know me, I'm called John Black, the African boy. I'm from Uganda. If you want to follow me on my social media platforms on Instagram, I use John Black Official, John Black Official, and Twitter, John Black Music. Then my, my YouTube channel is John Black Music, and even on Spotify, John Black. Thank you. Yeah, you must, I thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate this opportunity. I pray that we meet again. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you have a great, um, Big concert coming up tonight, so all the best for that Thank as you well. Guys. And please, you should come through. Come, Absolutely. Come, come, vibe. come, you get to know my music. Yeah, man. 
Well, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, here with John Black, Team C Media, and I'm Justine Malone. Yo, I'm your son and a jugida. I'm gonna follow you. I follow you. I follow you. I follow you. Na jo na gida. I'm gonna make it. I make it. I make it. What what up, people? How you do? It's your boy Jim Black, the African boy, and you're watching TMC Media, Australia's largest, biggest media platform. You know what it is. Keep it up. You know what it is. An Afro chain.